Hey you going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today's job we have a hoist barrel in off a 789 dump truck that needs to be repaired. So the 789 dump truck are mainly found on a mine site and they are used for moving material from one area to another for processing. And there are two of these hoist cylinders mounted in front of the back tyres and they lift and lower the body and the body can carry up to 180 tonne of material. And these cylinders are actually configured upside down and the reason for that is running them upside down stops dirt and debris from sitting on top of the cylinder glands and getting drawn into the barrel. So this barrel has come in because there is damage on the inside of the barrel. There are scores running from one end all the way to the other and they are far too deep to hone out, so we need to rebarrel it. And the damage inside was caused by the chrome layer on one of the chrome rods failing and getting stuck in between the piston and the barrel. So there is a clear sign that the rod was HVOF repaired and that is all the metal particle that is still down in the bottom of the barrel. The original rods from factory, they are dip chromed, which is a chemical transfer process. At at some stage of this cylinder's life it has obviously had damaged chrome on it and it needed to be repaired and the customer has used HVOF. But unfortunately we do see this quite often with HVOF. All it takes is a stone chip or a dint in a cylinder for it to start coming apart. And then it's not only the rod that gets damaged, it's the other components within the cylinder that get a bit of that material through them and they get damaged as well and then it riddles the hydraulic system with that metal particle. So this job has been here for a while, it hasn't been a priority for our customer. We've been doing a lot of their other work but this has now become a priority so we're going to get stuck into it. So the first thing I need to do is take it over to the welding area. I need to weld a square block onto the end of the barrel so we can set it up in the lathe. So because the eye doesn't have a centre in it from factory, I'm welding the block on so I can use my forge or tailstock chuck to dial it in and get everything running straight. Then I will put a centre in the block and that way when I go to reassemble this, everything can go back into perfect alignment. So to dial the barrel in, we're not going to be using a dial indicator. Because it is a painted surface and it is unmachined, it's not going to be running true. So instead of that, we're going to use the tip of an insert up against the barrel and try and get it to run as close to concentric as possible.
and I also make sure the flange face of the barrel is hard up against the chuck on the three jaws and that way I know it's going to be running pretty straight. Now that we've got our steady set up, I'm going to put a center in the end of it so we can set up our live center. And while it's set up, I'm gonna go through and mark each end of the barrel, just as a reference, so when I put this back together, I get everything back in alignment. So this barrel's got a pretty thick wall. I'm gonna to have to plunge in about 30 mil to get to the base of the weld. To machine out the weld to remove the barrel eye, I'm gonna be using a 12 mil button insert.
So that smoke is an indicator that I'm very close to the bottom of the well joint between the barrel end and the barrel. And that smoke is just from hydraulic oil being inside the barrel. So now we've got the weld machined out, I'm gonna take the barrel out of the lathe and use some heat to get the barrel to expand to release the barrel end. So that worked out perfectly, we applied a little bit of heat, the barrel expanded and the barrel end fell out. And now the barrel end's off, we can see all of that HVOF material and there are quite a few large pieces in there. We're just going to let that cool down for a little bit before I go and set it back up in the lathe. Drop it. Sit. Stay. Stay. Get it. Drop it. Drop it. Homeless. Stay. Stay. Get it. So the barrel's cooled down enough now, we're going to get it set back up in the lathe so we can remove the head flange.
So the head flange is off, but I still need to do a little bit more machining to it. So let's get the lathe set up for that. So this head flange needs to be an interference fit onto the new barrel. So I'm going to bore the ID to size and then I'm going to machine down the face to give me more surface area for a weld prep. Further than zero.
Righto, so that's our head flange completed. Next thing I need to do is machine up the new barrel, but before I can do that, I need to reset up the lathe. So the piece of material we're going to be using, it is a piece of unhoned tube. The ID is 310 and the OD is 375. But we need to machine 10 mil off the OD and hone 1 mil out of the ID to bring it to size. So unfortunately not all materials are available in every OEM standard sizes. So we buy what we can and we either process the ID or we process the OD, sometimes both. So we'll get this set up in the lathe so we can start machining one end to fit the head flange. So in most cases, if I'm machining up a new barrel and I need to turn down the OD, I would do that now, holding it from the inside. But the problem with clamping from the ID, you can't put a great deal of pressure on the chuck jaws because of the sheer size of this and how heavy it is. And because I've got 10 mil of material to remove off the OD, there is a chance the barrel could slip on the jaws and I could damage the ID of the tube. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna machine this end first, fit the head flange, weld that on. Once that's been welded, I can then grab it from the OD in the headstock and I can turn down the OD to size.
Righto guys, so we've got the end of our barrel machines. We've got the weld prep done. After double checking the measurements, I did decide to take another 0.1 of a mil off the area where the head flange is going. It would have been a little bit too tight for our interference fit. And I don't want to have that head flange lock up on me when I'm trying to fit it. So the next thing I need to do is take it out of the lathe and fit the head flange. Righto guys, so that went on about as perfect as you would want it to. If I'd have left that 0.1 of a mil on there, that definitely would not have gone on. It would have probably jammed halfway down. Next thing we need to do is take it over the welding area, weld the head flange onto the barrel. Righto, so the welding we're going to be doing on the barrel, we're going to be using CIG Vertical in a 1.2, so that is a flux cord gas assisted wire, also known as dual shield. To back that up, we're going to be using Argo Shield Heavy, which is 80% argon, 20% CO2. Be running that at about 27 volts and 7 metres of wire a minute.
Righto guys, so that is the head flange welded onto the barrel. I've put about nine to 10 layers of weld in there. It is still extremely hot and I still have a lot of work to do. I need to turn the OD, hone this to spec and weld on the barrel end. But you'll have to stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching. Right, are you ready? Yeah. Head you start Right, all right, head you start Oh. <laughs> so that, oh, wait, head you start oh, Wait, how you start Oh my God, I'm ready, are you? I'll try, you ready? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound right? No, like you're so good at this too. You could do it. Okay, righto guys, so no, we've I'm got doing the- it. No, no, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, wait, how'd you, how do I start that? <laughs> oh. oh dear. <laughs> I couldn't see. I was too busy looking at the wood on fire. <laughs> Playtime isn't over. It's all right. Come on. What a good boy. Oh, the dribble. So you know you... Fuck off, bird. You're yes. putting me off. No, it's not him. It's definitely him. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's very distracting. Which one are you? <laughs> God. Don't feed them. You're continuing. That's encouraging them. Cute. I know they make cute noises. Go away. Shoo. Shoo, shoo, shoo. But if you'd like to stay tuned for part two, thanks for watching. <laughs> Stop. Really? The other one's over there. Seriously. Go on. Yep. Go on. Go on. Shoo. Oh, wrong way. Oh, but they're so cute. Uh-oh, <laughs> there's a third one coming. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, no. Can you feed these guys or oh, jeez. We've started something. This is going to be a problem. Oh, they're following you. <laughs> they all go. <laughs> well, I need you to be like, oh, with the sunset. <laughs> Can you put your arms out, please? <laughs> Curtis, the Disney princess. Seriously? <laughs> oh, look out! We've got competition. <laughs> oh, pull on my shoulder. Okay. <laughs>